So let's jump in here. Jesus is uh, teaching us about the spiritual life, about our spiritual life, about what's going on in all of us. And he opens up by saying, those who love me and keep my word. So we know from reading the Gospels that Jesus does not actually often talk about loving him. Uh, there's, uh, you know, in the Hebrew Scriptures and in the New Testament, there's all sorts of talk of loving God. And in the later epistles, there's some talk about loving Jesus. But Jesus is saying, for those who love me, and if, if you love me, you will keep my word, you will keep my way. And uh, if you love me and you keep my way, he then goes on to tell us that the Father will love them, will love us, and we will come and make our home with them. So let's talk about this question of home. The Greek word for home that Jesus is using means to dwell or to sojourn, and it, it, has the, it is the root of the word to abide, uh, which is a verb, obviously, and the noun is abode. Abide and abode are connected. This is what Jesus is talking about. Now, abide, we're going to hear a lot about abide in the next chapter, with so-called chapter 15 of the gospel. I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me as I abide in you. We get, we get nine abides in five verses, so that it's clear that we are to, we are to abode in each other. And, and then twice in the New Testament, twice in John's Gospel, and actually twice in chapter 14, we get this word about home, abode. We know this incredibly well. So uh, I'm pointing here because uh, of all the funerals and the readings that happened from the lectern. In my father's house are many mansions. Now that is this word, mansions or dwelling places or many rooms. And, and that reading, which we all know so well, is about Jesus in the flesh telling his friends that he is going to the spiritual world, and in the spiritual world, he is going to make a home for them. He's going to make a, a place in the many mansions. The word mansions uh, 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 is about this many rooms, many rooms and rooms and rooms. So I'm going to make a particular place for you. But now in today's reading where we have Jesus at the Last Supper giving his so-called last discourse, he's doing the opposite of that. He's saying the Father and I, so the, the, the beings of the Spirit will come and they will make a home in us. They'll make a home in each of us and as, in us as a community. Now you notice that we're talking about home. We're not talking about, we will make a, a temple, you will find me in the temple, or, or I mean, there was no such thing as church uh, or mosque, the, the, but this, this idea of temples, it's, it's home. This is, a, this is a folksy sort of thing that Jesus is preparing for us. And he said, not only will the Father uh, and he be present in our home, in our interior home, be with us, but he says that uh, the Father will send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, to us in his name. So let's talk a little bit about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And uh, here Jesus refers to the Spirit as an Advocate. And what the Advocate is about uh, when you look into the Hebrew Scriptures, this is like Jesus is sending you a, a, a divine lawyer. The advocate is a lawyer, a defense lawyer, for all the things that are under it. You're, you're being under attack by all of the things in life, and the defense lawyer will defend your soul, defend you from these attacks. That's what the advocate is. And we also know, of course, that he refers to the Holy Spirit as a counselor, he refers to the Holy Spirit as a teacher. He refers to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Truth. He refers to the Holy Spirit as His Spirit. So He is physically flesh going away, but He is sending His Spirit to be with us. If we were going to translate this today, we almost might say that um, I will send to you a holy influencer who will influence you in my way, in the way of my word, in the way of my love. We then hear that Jesus says to us, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. So the, the sort of peace, you know that if you have uh, uh, great Jewish friends or if you go to the state of Israel, they, they will say shalom, that'll be the greeting. And the greeting for shalom uh, is a, it's a, it's a, it's a rounded greeting. It's a, it's a holistic greeting of, of wishing fullness and peace to you. 
uh, uh, and it's, it's a beautiful term. That's actually not what Jesus is talking about. So, uh, it, it, I, I, you, know, you can have shalom, but I'm going to give you my peace. So now we get Jesus' peace. And what is the peace of Jesus? When I was a boy, we had an Italian priest in our parish who used to say, peace of Christ, peace of Christ, peace of Christ. And, and it, it caught my ear. So as a kid, I was always kind of the peace of Christ was kind of this thing that would, would play around in my brain. And so we know about the peace of Christ by looking at Jesus living his peace. And so, for instance, we're in the Last Supper right now. This is, this is Jesus' last meal before he's going to be arrested, accused, beaten, spend the night in a, in a sort of subterranean cave, pulled up, beaten again, and then uh, judged and crucified. And in the night before all of this, he speaks of peace, he speaks of love, and he seeks to comfort his friends. He is undeterred by the central love peace that he feels in the depths of his being by the chaos and violence and trouble all around him. And he is seeking to give what he has to his friends. And he says to them, I do not give you as the world gives. And so, in other words, we all want peace, but the world can't give it to us. The world is not a peaceful place. It just is not a peaceful place. And if we're looking for peace in the world, we're always going to be disappointed. The world is an anxious, anxious place. And the peace that Jesus gives us is a spiritual peace. It's a, it's a peace that, uh, as we later hear, the peace of God, the peace that passes all understanding. This is a spiritual peace that is for the depths of our being. That's what Jesus is talking about. I'm going to give you something that the world can't give to you. If you want this, you're going to have to come get it. And it's, it's for all those who love me and follow my way. I'm giving that to you. And he, then he says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Well, there is trouble everywhere around. I mean, Judas has just left to betray him. And, and he says, you know, don't be afraid. You know that in the scriptures it says over and over and over, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. We all know that our world is seriously troubled and fear is wildly out of control. There's a podcast known as the United States of Anxiety and it's a, it's a podcast that just enumerates some of our anxiety and I'm sure, I haven't listened to it recently, but I'm sure the last one is on the, the murderous slayings in Buffalo. It's just, it's just trouble. It's just is what it is. And what Jesus is saying is, do not be afraid of this. So how do we get access to the gifts that Jesus is talking about here? Steve, I'm going to give this to you. Uh, how do we get access to the gifts of this? So um, one of the ways that we might begin to understand this is from Teresa of Avila, who is one of the great mystics and teachers of our tradition. She wrote several books uh, that, are, that are beyond classics. One is about her life called The Life, and in it, she, she writes the story. She creates the language of the spiritual life that we all know. And then she writes a book that comes to her in a vision, which we call The Interior Castle. In Spanish, she wrote in Spanish in the latter 1500s, is called Mansions. And so it ties in with the gospel readings and there's this whole word of mansions that we're talking about. So I go, in my father's house there are many mansions, I come to create a mansion within you, and so then she talks about the mansions of the soul and how it is that we find access to all of this. This came to her in a vision that she, she wrote about, but she also spoke about, so it's, we hear it from other people of her day. And in the vision, she had the vision of the human soul as a glittering uh, crystal or diamond, and it was beautiful beyond belief. And in it, she saw this many, many mansions. She talked about the seven mansions, and it, uh, it was almost as though you, you were, you would so, you know, the outer one was seven, the inner one six, almost kind of like a, like a dartboard, six, five, four to the, or excuse me, the seventh mansion is in the center. 
And then in her vision of this, she also sees what's outside the, the mansions of the soul. And there she talks about the moat. And in the moat, she sees darkness all around. She speaks of, of, of snakes and vipers that bite us. And she said, there are people that live their whole life outside of their soul. They live in their bodies, but they have no idea that they have a soul. They have no interior life per se. And she said, oh, what a, what a tragedy. This is like somebody living in a country, in a village, but not knowing the rest of the, the, the country and world that's out there. And uh, she talks about this in such a way that for people who live lives outside of their soul, it's free game. It's free game for these people. And, and that means they live in a way where they may have a good day, they may have a bad day, but you can be guaranteed that they're going to get bit by the vipers of life. They're going to get bit by the snakes of life. And then in this darkness, it's just a really rough go. It's a really, really rough place to be. And then she talks about for those who begin to understand that they have a soul that is brilliant, that has these mansions. And the mansions not only go this way, but they go, they go this way. It's a, it's, it has a kind of diamond shape to it, like this, as she understands it. And, and in this mansion where there's many rooms, she said the outer rooms of the mansion are the rooms of self-knowledge and humility. This is for, the pe for people who come to realize that who they are, the truth of who they, who they are, is that they're not God. And they're not, they're not, they're just not, they're not the man, or the woman, or however you might, because that, that it takes a certain amount of humility, a kind of, oh wow, look at life, and look at where I am with life. And, and that sort of reflection leads to the second set of mansions, which are the mansions of prayer. When she says, so the way to enter into your soul is through prayer. And she uh, elucidates about seven types of prayer, but the primary prayer that she talks about is uh, what she calls mental prayer. Uh, we might call it the prayer of recollection. It's, it's the sort of prayer that many of us do after receiving communion. We come back to our pew. We, she teaches us that after you've received communion is the best time to be in communion with our Lord and to, to have communion, to be together, to reflect and to think and to pray. And she talks about the many rooms in these mansions. And so many of you know that recent studies about the memory are like a library that has subterranean levels. I went to a college that has a, a large library with huge subterranean levels. And in the stacks down below, everything is there. You just have to go down to the stacks and you can find it. And that's what it is with our whole life. We've not forgotten anything. It's all in the stacks. It's just that we don't have access to the stacks. But she said, when you begin to reflect upon your life, these are the different rooms, these are the different books in the stacks, you can go and look at and see the stories of your lives and begin to, to reflect upon them with reference to the divine, with reference to God. And these are, this is the stuff of prayer. This is the stuff of our, our, our personhood and our godhood starting to come together. And the third mansions are the awakening that we actually want to do something about this. We, we now know that there is another being in the, in the world, a, a, a something beyond us, and we begin to seek to do good. We begin to seek to not want to do those things which we understand dissipates the power of our spirit. Remember when I, I went to a boarding school for two years, and they used to call the kids who were drinking and smoking dissipation. I never knew what that what they were talking about. But here they're talking about, she's saying the dissipation of our lives on things that are not worthy of our lives. They just dissipate. We just waste our lives. We waste our energy on things that have no, no eternal value. They don't, they don't give us anything in the end. She said in the third mansions, we seek actually to walk the way. Jesus said, those who love me and keep my word, those who love me and seek to walk my way. And then comes that, we move into the fourth mansions. And the fourth mansions are, are the time when, when the gifts of God begin to come our way. We begin to experience things that are not of our own making, and they start to come into us. And as she elucidates all this stuff, what we, what we see in our souls is at the center of our souls, there is that place that Jesus talks about. She quotes today's scripture. 
that the Father and I will come and make our home in you. And then she talks about the Spirit being there. That, and that at the center of our souls, there is a divine light that burns with a radiant glory. And that when we draw closer to the light, we, in some sense, bloom in the light. The, the fullness of our being blooms in the light of God, the interior light of God. Thomas Merton used to talk about that there is this light within us, this place of light that is inviolable, that nothing that we do in our lives, even though we screw up our lives without ceasing, there is this divine light that burns with us. And this is the light that carries us toward the, toward the heavens. This is the light of the, of the be made in the image of God, light, life, and love, the thumbprint of that life that is within us. And it is in us, and, but we oftentimes, we don't know it, and sometimes we don't have access to it. Or we, when we're prayer, we just think, oh, I'm so boring, and God is boring, and man, I can't wait, I can't wait to do something else, right? And uh, she said, we, we lose the vision that there is this light within us, and yet when we draw closer to the light through time, or we get, then we are transformed, and we are set free. And so she says that when you get closer to the light, then you experience what Jesus is talking about. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. My peace I give to you. No fear, no, no troubles, no, 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 no uh, you know, you just, you just have this peace. Now, Teresa herself lived in a, in a terrible time. It was a terrible time. This was a time of the Inquisition. They were killing people like her. Uh, and she was, she was removed. Uh, uh, she, it was a man's world. And she was, she's a doctor of the church. She's one of the greatest people of all time. And yet they, they took her and sort of put her in a, in a place to kind of imprison her because they didn't know what to do with her because she didn't follow the rules. And they took John of the Cross, her, her, her spiritual advisor, uh, and they imprisoned John. And there was war all over the place. And she said, fine. She had a peace that was inviolable. She couldn't be broken from her peace. And it's just the peace that Jesus had. It's inviolable. And our world is crazy. The world is really crazy. I mean, you just cannot help it. You pick up the paper in the morning and just go, holy smokes. And, but it does not mean that we need to live all the time fearful and anxious and afraid. Because if we seek the inner spirit, there is a light of peace there that when we draw close to it, also radiates out to the world. One of the things she's very clear about is this peace this light that we can experience actually is the thing that changes the world. When somebody sees somebody of light, they feel lighter. When they see somebody of dark, they feel hopeless. So for us to be people of hope, to be people of peace, to be people of Jesus, what she is saying to us is, be about your interior business and all shall be well.